Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the No Laying Up Podcast. Sally here. The best week of the year, Masters Week, is finally here. Uh, we are coming to you live from Augusta. And when I say we, that is myself and Mr. Kevin Van Valkenburg. Hello, KBV. How are you, buddy? Sally, I'm great. I'm doing good. I got to walk around a little bit, got to see some people, got to feel the ground beneath my feet today. It's just it's so exciting, Masters Week. <laughs> Published my first piece already. Things are feeling good. It was uh, it was wild being out there Sunday, and then like I'm nobody out there, and then the wave of people today. Like I kind of forgot about the scale of how many people were actually going to be there. It was it was massive. Also calling in from home, the birthday boy himself, Mister Tron Carter. Hello, TC. <laughs> Hello, guys. Hello. Hopefully, that ground under your feet was feeling very very bouncy out there. Okay. Yeah, in the most 2024 thing ever, it's 85% chance of thunderstorms on Thursday. And after getting this great weather lead in, oh. I hope, I don't know, I hope it's firm enough under there that it can withstand Thursday. But maybe it somehow misses Thursday, but it's not encouraging. But we'll see. We'll see what the models yeah. say. But I think, yeah. uh, I mean, that's not necessarily a 2024 thing. That's like an every year thing. And I know the I was reading in Global Golf Post this morning that the, the, the azaleas, uh, Scott Michaud had a nice piece in there about the azaleas blooming earlier and earlier. Uh, winter seems to be, you know, there's, there's some kind of warm spots in the calendar now, February, March and Augusta. So taking a little bit of luster off the azaleas and the dogwoods and all that. Snowing at my house, TC. So I don't, I don't know what you're talking about, but listen, you guys have heard us talk a lot about it. I'm going to try. I don't think I can get it in the camera shot, but I, I want to give you evidence that I am wearing my doer, uh, not my jeans, but you've heard us talk about doer jeans, but I'm wearing the no sweat pant. Uh, they are my favorite pair of pants. They're the go-to pants. KVV and I got a, KVV and I got a party we got to go to tonight. They look good. They are guess. perfect for that. Uh, they're perfect for lounging around the house. They also make fantastic performance denim jeans. I have them in the rinse color. They're very comfortable. Uh, they're great to wear while traveling. And then the no sweat pants. They honestly do work for any situation. So I'm, wait, I'm what are the no these. sweat pants? Are they, I don't have just like, I just have the jeans. Just like casual pants. I don't know what you'd call them. Chinos almost, or, okay. you know, You're just flexible enough. To put I cannot do that. No, no, no. We have the crop view going on YouTube. I don't, I don't think, uh, I don't think it's good. I don't think anybody wants to really see that, but they I'll shout out it. the jeans, the jeans. I, I wore them on the flight back from Scotland through Germany, to New York, uh, last week. And they were, they were delightful. It, it takes balls to wear a, uh, a set of jeans on a, 10 hour flight. That is a big right? endorsement. That is. They, they make stretch performance denim and lifestyle apparel for men and women uh, with elevated styles that stand apart. They're made from natural fibers for high stretch and breathability. The temperature regulating fabrics keep you cool and dry. And the antibacterial treatment means less washing. Plus, they're committed to using 85% plant based materials for natural softness and comfort. Trust us, you need Doer in your wardrobe. Order your favorite jeans today. Check out Doer's flagship stores in LA or Denver or shop doer.com slash nlu right now our listeners get 20 percent off site-wide when you use our exclusive url that's shop doer shop d-u-e-r.com slash nlu don't wait go get 20 percent off now shop doer.com slash nlu 85 percent plant-based materials and 85 percent chance of rain on Thursday. I, I'm wondering. I, I can't. I don't know if I saw no that in the copy, Cinco. and I put that in my head. I really don't remember what the actual percent of chance of rain was, but 100 uh, percent chance of a, of a partial eclipse here in Augusta today. It was uh, kind of a, a pretty surreal scene. Uh, uh, listen, I think there's enough eclipse content should, out there. But. Should Solly ask Fred Ridley if he believes in climate change at, uh, at the Wednesday presser? <laughs> I'm a, I, I'll I'll see what he has to say Some privately. Of that going yeah, yeah, we'll probably yeah. talk privately about that, yeah. but. All right, I asked you guys to go around. We're going to start tonight's, uh, today's preview podcast with uh, kind of a draft of some kind. We're going to go around the horn and uh, just cue you guys up for what you're most interested in, what you're most intrigued by, what is your thing that you're excited to find out about the competitors, the golf course, whatever it might be about the 2024 Masters. What are you, what are you looking forward to? What, what are you anticipating here when, we, when the gun goes off on Thursday, Kevin? Can we have multiple answers? Or are we going to go around? Go around in one, right. one at a time. <clears throat> I'm interested in what the cat is going to look like. We haven't seen him really uh, at all this year. The brief window of, of Genesis didn't really feel like it counted. I want it, you know, it's warm weather. It feels like he hasn't played a warm weather tournament for a while. So I don't think he can win, but I do really want to see if he's uh, hitting the ball well enough to make the cut. This would be, he's got 23 in a row. This would be the record for the most consecutive made cuts at the Masters. I think that's a, Pretty cool thing to have as a solo thing. So that would be my number one thing that I'm interested in Thursday morning. TC, go ahead. Is Scotty just that much better than everybody else? 
Uh, like I think that's the kind of the, the consensus. That's the Caleb Williams pick here, I think, for, for my first rounder. You know, we'll see what Rom does. We'll see, like, Victor, we'll get to Victor because that's another one of mine. But Hideki's playing well. Like, who's going to who's gonna rise to the occasion and challenge Scotty? I think it'd be fascinating if Scotty comes out and lays an egg in round one and then Ooh. has to kind of work his way back. I think that would be one of the cooler things that could happen. Um, but, yeah, I think – I think it, in any case, if Scotty runs away with it and wins it, it turns into we're witnessing true greatness in history and the, probably the biggest you know dominance since Tiger. And if he doesn't, then it's like a free for all, and it's really interesting to see who who else kind of rises to the occasion. Well, it's almost a little all for naught if Scotty doesn't get a major championship and another green jacket out of this incredible run, right? I mean, if we're looking at this run that he's been on for now over over almost three years, it is one major is light compared to what he's done on the golf course, what he's produced in in my all beloved strokes gain. So it is that that microscope it's going to be it can slip it can be a slippery slope really quickly in terms of that starting to be a storyline of. All right, man, we've seen you do this so many times in all these other places. It's like, if he doesn't win this one, which is a huge ask, like the odds are he would not win this week. But if he doesn't win, it's just going to, that pressure is just going to start building and building and building because he is better than a, a better player than to have only one major right now. Like, Colin Morikawa has more majors than him right now. And he's, Scotty's a lot better at golf than Colin Morikawa is very, very, very consistently. So, Scott, Colin Morikawa has more objective majors, I think, subjectively. Scotty has more majors. Okay. I'll, I'll, we'll, we can unpack that. But, guys, I'm going to get this in first. We are not going to do it. We're not going to slip up. We're not, uh, you know, you're not going to go 45 minutes without mentioning them. I, I don't even have any real reason other than it's just it's snuck up on us way too many times. Way before he left for live, uh, we would do major preview pods and just be like, oh, yeah, remember Brooks Kepka? Like, remember that guy that always wins all these things? We should probably talk about him because he doesn't play well in between the majors but shows up and manages to do it. He uh, was runner-up last year. He's not sneaking up. I mean, he still feels a little under talked about. His odds still feel a little bit light. I think he's plus eighteen hundred to win, which is, uh, you know, I know he came in playing better last year. We didn't really know how to evaluate that with with what's going on with Liv. Uh, I, I mean, I think Doral probably not a great great comparison, but it is a championship level golf course, and he did not have a good week last week uh, at at Doral. But he turns it on at majors. I'm done dismissing that. I'm done pretending like that's not the truth. And I'm really curious to see if he steps up and does it again because he did it last year. He did it at the PGA, obviously, and did it here at the Masters. And I'm just not going to fall for it again. I, that's my pledge. I will say about last year, though, he won right before the Masters last year. So it felt like he was right. uh, coming. He was coming. So if he plays well this week, it is truly evidence that he is the only person who Jay can Hunt. flip a switch and yep. just be like, yep, now's the time to golf to give a shit about uh, I, I totally agree. I think he's fascinating. I think I loved uh, just his refusal to let Liv kind of like have his yeah. sort of I mean, over and over when given the opportunity to be like, is this a boon for Liv? He's like, no, I mean, it's like pretty good for me. Like I yeah. feel pretty good. And I think that was, I, I of all the people who left, I kind of like respect Brooks the most because he's been like, yeah, I'm you know, like, I'm doing this for me. Like I just, I took the bag and now I'm, I'm going to win as many tournaments and I don't care. I'm going to be friends with these guys still. And, Man, I, you know what? I, I, it's all power to Brooks. Like, he played it better than anybody, I think. Well, it, I, I don't think you can equate Brooks's major championship success just down to a mathematical formula, but I was, of course, messing around with the uh, the approach tool on data golf leading into this. And there's something to Augusta how you are you are taking shots from the 100 to 150 range and moving them into the 150 to 200 range, which, I mean, there's every almost every player in the field is going to expect it to take one and a half to two more shots per round from that longer range than closer range. And Brooks is not as good from that 100 to 150 compared to his peers as he is from 150 to 200. So that is at least at least a way of speaking to how he's been able to have such a major championship success um, it, is that that formula is going to play a lot better than the wedge contest that happened out of the PGA Tour. You sound like Dodo Molinari setting up the, the Ryder Cup course here. Your boy's been digging. Your boy's been digging. He's got a few stats for you guys later on. So yeah. A few of them that might, uh, might blow your mind. All right, what's next for you, Kevin? I want to know. It's TC, you mentioned this, so I don't feel like I'm stealing a little bit of yours, but I want to know what's up with Victor Hovland. Like, you know, played really Me well too. here last yeah. year, obviously searching a little bit has tried a bunch of different uh, swing theories, coaches, you know, equipment changes, all kinds of different methods. You know, I don't know. I, I've been kind of thinking about Victor and, and listening to some of his interviews over the last few months. And 
the dude might just be a searcher. He might mm. really be have that a little bit of itch that Cat had where he just couldn't really ever leave uh, good enough alone. And I don't know if that's great for your golf always. Like if you're, I mean, look, Tiger would say, look, I, I always figured out a way to get through it and get better. But I don't know, like, is it really the long-term play for consistency? Like I, maybe Victor will make us all look silly in a year when it clicks for him and he's like, yeah, now I'm actually going to win all these majors that I came close to winning. I knew it wasn't good enough, but man, it sure feels like he's out in the wilderness right now. Like just hasn't had a good result this year and was an awesome player last year. So good in the PGA last year. He would look, we've seen him kind of wilt in majors and just not really produce when asked. And he did perform at the PGA, the 16th hole aside, and he got beaten by Brooks Koepka. Like, there's no shame in any of that. That would look like yeah. a different guy, but now he's kind of reverted back into, you know, a more human version. Yeah, my preseason predictions were like, Victor's going to ascend to the number one player in the world. You drafted him number one in our next six-year <laughs> draft over Scott. Listen, I'm Schettler. taking, you know, he's a franchise player. I'm taking the... Long Taking the positional value long, you know, long-term approach here. Coming from a Cleeks fan, that doesn't really mean a whole heck of a lot with the way they've drafted over the years. TC, what's next for you? A lot of different directions we can go. I was going to go with the what's going on with Victor. I'm really excited to watch Bryson. I miss mm. Bryson. Yeah. Like he's he's such a moron and a lunatic <laughs> that like, I just, I mean, even I just like right before we got on, Will Knights tweeted the, the, yeah, the, so the, good. the uh, screen grab of him on live from you know, with the eclipse glasses on, just looking up, looking like a, just a joyful, I did not see this. Yeah. joyful little kid. And I'm like, man, like that guy, what a goober. And I just, I miss him. And I think he's going to play well this week. He's, yeah. he was playing well at Doral last week. It seems like he's kind of back. He's got that pep in his step again, seemingly. And I don't know, weirdly, I'm looking at Doral as a better indicator of just form than maybe some of the lead up PGA tour events here. And like between Waco and, um, you know, and Bryson and, you know, Moronk, guys like that. I'm just, you know, I'm seeing, all right, well, how did those guys play at Doral? I think Bryson is is going to have a good week. I don't think he's going to win, but I think he's going to have a good week and, and make some noise, do some some outrageous stuff. The only pushback I would say to that is he hasn't had a good week here since he was an amateur, right? I mean, I, I, has he ever played well here other than that? A run where he was, I think, after two rounds, I think he was in the lead or he was up in the top five. I think, I mean, not the lead, but he was in the top 10. I, I, yeah. I have to look that up, but I, I do for the for the YouTube viewers, I do have a chance to pull up the photo of, uh, <laughs> of Bryson grinning, staring up at the sky. You see, so you see in the comments saying, could have used Gary Player. As well. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know. I just, I, I miss Bryson, man. Yeah, it's I like, do too. I do too. Yeah, of course. I, I'm going to disagree with you that he plays well. I just, again, diving into what makes success at, at Augusta national today a little bit. I know you would think he would do really well, but uh, you know, he's it's, I'm mad that I, he, he never like hit it over on 14 uh, T <laughs> what he said. He was, instead of going down 13, that he was just going to take it up over the trees on 13. <laughs> like, why hasn't this delivered all the things that he's talked about? These crazy Maybe he does that this thing. year, right? It's just like, That'll he stopped great. talking no, about it and he's just going to go do it this year. Not with the new T though. I mean, 13's gone back since he said he would do that. So I don't, I don't think we're yeah. going to see that. Um, my next up, same kind of vein as Brooks Kepka. He's Brooks Kepka light, and I mean very light, and that he has not won a major championship yet. So I, of course, not putting him in the same category. But in the same way that you cannot look at his week-to-week -week PGA Tour starts and, and results and evaluate how, what that means for him in major championships. Do you know who I'm talking about yet, KVV? I'm talking about Will Zalatoris. He's a major championship killer. He's finished second in T6 in his two Masters. He lost the PGA in the playoff, and he lost the U.S. Open by one shot. He is uh, just, he, you know, David Golf's got that great chart that shows your strokes gain performance in majors and in regular events, and he is one of the guys that jumps off the page of, like, I'm a big dick player. I don't care about the little PGA Tour events. Uh, him and Brooks except are the ones for, that Except for Genesis and things of that nature. For sure. Well he, the good I think ones. he's an attempted killer. I think he's an attempted murderer. He's premeditated. Yeah, he's <laughs> manslaughter maybe a little bit. We'll, we'll see. I, I'm excited to see if I he, you know, he, we, you know, he had a good, uh, I forget what, what good event did he have earlier this year. Was that Genesis that he Genesis. plays really well? Yeah. yeah. Um, and I think I declared that he was going to win a major this year, so I haven't lost track of that one. And I just, he's on my radar definitely for this week, and I'm really keen to see post-surgery and, and all that he's been through. Like, is he still that dude that, 
pops up big time and make because like the odds would say he's not that guy, but uh, I'm I'm really keen to see what he's got cooking. Played at practice with Tiger today. Yeah, he was the guy who was uh, saying, you know, what giving us the Tiger report. Hmm. Uh, what's next? Look, I, I keep I feel like I'm keep picking the old heads here, but I want to see what Phil's gonna do. Hell yeah! Like what will Phil do next? I Phil was really fun last year. It was a he had, he had I think I <laughs> joked that he had been sort of lobotomized prior to the masters and then the masters it was like he woke up finally and was being himself again and he was hitting it in the trees and hitting driver off of the the pine straw from down to the two green and he was you know yucking it up and and it's having fun with the media for the first time since the live stuff that was a fun memory for me and, and then you know i didn't even really get a watch uh when he went nuts on sunday because i was out with the leaders but i want to see if like that dude can still pull off some magic at this place. Look, if he can and get in contention, contention at 53, I think for all the shit that Phil has taken from fans, I think fans will get behind him. I think that they will wrap their Augusta, arms around sure. him and embrace sure. him, and he will feel like the, the, a huge amount of love and support that he hasn't felt in, in years. I mean, I hate what Phil has done to the game of golf and what it has done to professional golf, but when he was on his run last year, I was, let's fucking go man yeah. there's something about that moment like that run and uh again i i've personally found it quite easy to put to brush aside feelings i have towards the live golf product compared to how i think of the players that play on that tour and how they fare in major championships it just doesn't i'm not rooting for or against them for that reason um just because this is a totally different category so tc what's next i want to see if walk goes for real I've been really impressed with his like globe trotting ways. I think can he validate the special exemption in? I think he's one of the few guys that I was truly disappointed to see go because he didn't have exemptions into majors due to previous wins. And I think he's his his resume is spoken or you know, kind of foretold, hey, this guy's a, a primetime player. His performance win in at Riviera a few years ago, kind of wire to wire there him winning down in Australia, all that stuff. I just, I think Waco's a really good player and I don't want to see him kind of rise to the challenge and validate it. And, uh, but you know, I'm keen to see if, if he can. I was one of the most disappointed in Waco, like his first few months and even year really since moving to live, he fell off about as hard as anyone. I mean, he was, he was a top 20 player in the world. I'm not talking OWGR of course, but top 20 player in the world. And then just kind of, fell off the grid and was not playing good golf on live. And then starting from the fall all the way up through now, he's played tremendous, tremendous golf and is easily one of the 10 best players in the world right now. And uh, I am, I, I hope, I hope to see him succeed. Cause it was, that was a, I was most disappointed because I didn't want to see a career like his kind of go the way that it started going when he went yeah. to live. And now that it's back on track, I hope to see him continue to succeed. It's cool. Yeah. It's cool to see kind of that, you know, going against the grain and, and maybe improving over his previous like and it should be a great course fit for him too out there be. so well you know we're we're nine picks into this and i don't think this name's been mentioned yet and he's probably still the second best player in the world mr rom that's john rom yeah that was gonna be my i think he's you know he's lost a little bit of his swagger um and i'm just keen to see if this environment brings that back out right it should it really should he's the defending it champion it's you know he in his own words, he has not played a golf tournament yet this year because he said 54 holes shotgun star. That's not a golf tournament. So he has not played one yet this year. So uh, I, I I don't know if he's, you know, got enough reps coming into this. Again, that's that's his words. Those aren't my words. I'm just, my he was lobbying for 72 holes today, too, uh, or, uh, or yesterday with the BBC. Well, he wants so. to start playing real golf tournaments. Yeah. So I, I, I think it's it was a, The Guardian. It's, he gave that, art, Guardian. that interview okay. to The Guardian. To, to you and Mary The Guardian. I, I want to give out the... The actual Sorry. props instead of the aggregators, TC. You know I don't love the aggregators. No, I'm I'm with you. I'm with you. It's all to say, uh, not sure this was the best way to prepare for it, but maybe that doesn't matter. Like it, maybe it truly doesn't matter, and it is going to be a different vibe for him, I think, this year. And um, I, I'm very, I'm just very curious. I I truly don't know what's going to happen with Rom. I could see him winning by five, and I could see him being a total non-factor. So I I, I struggle to make a prediction there. I'll make a prediction. If he doesn't play well, he will be pissed he will throw clubs he will he will start to really feel like what the hell did i do like and i don't think like regrets for live but just like did i not prepare well this is a dude who lives for the the fight as you said at the beginning and i i think he's going to be mad if just if it falls off like he's he's he wants to win he expects to win this thing and he hasn't been playing bad like he's no. not been he's not he just hasn't been you know he hasn't won an event on live yet and has not you know dominated like we kind of thought 
can he turn into Brooks, right? Of yeah. like, hey, I'm just going to show up for the majors. I have some concerns. Is he going to eat too much at the champion's dinner? It's an That's absolute banger Jeez. of a yeah. menu. He's got the, you know, and he's got the Jacqueline for the, the uh, white wine. He's got the, the Rioja for the red. Just some some great selections all the way across the board. Low-key advantage for Rory, not having to be able to go to the champion's dinner and being all food hungover come Thursday. Just <laughs> hey, God, by the way, fun. guys, on the on the podcast that we did uh Sunday night recap, uh, I said that Rory was was not gonna show up until Tuesday, and then we were uh, convinced that I made that up or something. <laughs> well, you did tell us about your dreams with Tom Dillon. Yeah. You know, it was very hard to understand what was a dream, what was real too soon. Yeah, but no, Rory, Rory, uh, Adam Shupak reported that Rory is not showing up until till, until Tuesday. I guess Rory was down at at uh, Seminole playing with his dad all week leading into the the uh, Valero. So yeah, we'll see. Uh, you know, this is approach different approach number seventeen for Rory coming into yeah. into the Masters. We'll see if this would if this would work. See, it reminds me of like you know when you're doing science experiments, like you're supposed to like keep some keep certain things constant, right? And then you know before you get a sample size and before you can determine what variables to change up, and he changes up the the inputs every, every single time. year. Yeah. <laughs> He's using different baking sodas for the for the volcano. Uh, I, I this wasn't even on my list, but like let's just do that one now, like. Second in strokes gain approach last week at Valero, um, working on like a new takeaway thing. I think if there's a path to Rory doing really well at this, this week and at the masters in general, it's with something like that in terms of, all right, let's take you out of whatever you get into pre-shot wise, whatever mindset you get into. And let's put like a new something in play to like check you guard you up against before you hit the approach shots, which like I'll get, we'll get into some of this later. It is the approach shots that have cost Rory uh, success at the masters. If he can hit the ball close to the hole, I know that sounds incredibly obvious, but if he, he drives it so well here, if he hits his irons pretty well, he's going to, he's going to be in the top five, like almost no matter what. Um, again, I, I feel like I, I'm the clown putting the, the, the face paint on right now of how I've managed to talk myself into Rory when I, when I've dismissed it, but it just, there is that glimmer of hope, man. I, I kind of, if you'd asked me a week ago, I'd have said, there's no hope. Let's not even do this. Let's skip over this part. And there's a, there's a glimmer of hope here. I shouldn't do it, but I'm going to at least have a little bit of hope. I God, he's well. showing, showing the telltale symptoms, the telltale signs of dick riding. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's going to play well. I'm going to stick my neck out and say, I think like he's, I don't know that he's going to win, but I think he's going to finish top 15. I'll say. I, yeah. I, I mean, yeah, I would, I would hope so. Well, I he mean, hasn't finished. I mean, you know, that hasn't been a, like two years ago. Yes. But like prior to that, I don't think he was top 15. Like he, it hasn't been a guarantee in the last, you know, five years or so. You can fact check me there in real time if you like, but I, I don't look, he's, there's something that's bugs him about this place. What I hope Sally is what you're talking about is that he is willing to like mentally stick with whatever this is that he's been working with Butch. If he hits a, a bad pole or whatever, because if he just was like coming in here without all that stuff, he was going to hit bad pulls anyway. So I don't want him to feel like, oh, well, I, I got to go back to some version of what, because this is, I don't trust this. Well, dude, like you got to trust what you're going through because you just had an incredibly great iron play week. Yeah. So stick with that and ride it and, and just hope for, you know, you can kind of build the momentum throughout the week. So he missed the cut last year, was runner up in 22, missed the cut in 21, T5 and 20, T21 and 19. Then he went T5, T7, T10, fourth, T8 from 2014 to 2018. So yeah, it's seems been good. Good. three of the last five. He has not uh, finished inside. I'll, say, the top I'll upgrade then. I'll say top 10. I'll, I'll stick my neck out a little further than that. So he's, I think he's going to finish top 10. Guys, I have an idea. I think Rory should play quota with himself. Okay. I, I am Where? hold on. I just I want to I want to call out KVV for sticking his neck out for a plus one ten bet of where he's gonna be in the top ten. What when are those odds updated? Plus I wouldn't have got those I, I wouldn't have got those odds, you know. He's plus two thirty for a top five. I don't even know if that's sticking your neck out. But that's like there's all the like easy money there. The, all that's the marks well, it's small field. It's not the, the top ten here is not the same as the top ten at the US Open, is what I would say. I, no, one should, Gooch, no one should take my without Dean Burmester. Yeah. <laughs> no one should listen. That's the caveat. No one should take my gambling advice. No, on it's anything. a good bet. Just okay. it's not long odds is what okay. I'm saying here. Sorry. You're saying TC. No, I was just saying he should, you know, you want him to play. You, you want him to hit it close. You want him to pin his ears back. You want him to play with kind of carefree golf. Go try to make birdies. Go play quota. Go play Stableford with yourself. You know, say, hey, I got to I got to get to my quota. I got to get a I got to get points on every hole. But B, I got to. <laughs> You know, birdies count like like a birdie 
and a par counts for more than than you know two pars right like it's it's uh, is this the setup for that though like i, I I'm, everything i'm hearing and seeing is that this is the setup that causes for calls for discipline you know this calls for you know not firing at flags getting it on the right tiers and all that stuff but uh maybe after thursday maybe it'll be a lot softer who knows i mean yeah it's not screaming Rory setup for me right I now. I think it would help him if he on Saturday morning was down three or something to Scheffler yeah. and was like, All right, you got to shoot 67 if you want to be in this. Today. He just goes out in 29. You never uh, know. Yeah. Before you go down to your next one, KBV, I want to give a shout out to our friends at Roback. You all know Roback, best fit, best feel. Their Azalea collection is back and better than ever. I'm not rocking the Azalea collection, but I was out there today. Got a lot of nice compliments about that. Everyone kept saying, Dude, I can't go anywhere without seeing that subtle dog logo. The designs are next level. The products are amazing as always. Uh, we are fired up uh, for these massive events in golf that are coming in, in this spring, which I think there's one this week. I, I will confirm that. But performance polos are moisture wicking, have great stretch. The collar is crisp. It does not lose its shape. They fit way better than those old boxy polos. They are the best designs paired with the best feeling polos. They got fantastic hoodies. TC's rocking my favorite white one. KVV's got the blue one on. Uh, they fit so much better uh, than, than normal hoodies do. They're so soft. The fabric is fantastic. They're great for any situation. They got looper shorts, the new looper shorts. I got a pair. I'm saving them uh, for a big day out the course. I'm not wasting them on a practice Ooh. round. They got made with belt loops that could be worn on and off the course. They're very comfortable. So if you haven't already, it's time to load up on some Roback for yourself and for others. Code NLU at Roback.com for generous 20% off your order through the end of this week. That is R-H-O-B-A-C. CK.com 20% off bottoms, Q-zips, hoodies, and more with code NLU. Spring golf isn't the same without Roback. That's 20% off your first order, I should say. Uh, the end of this Solid. Week, Roback.com. I just, I just want to say, too, I was blown away at the amount of, of canine, you know, subtle canine logos that we saw when we were in the UK, even. Tons of them over there. Crazy. I didn't know they were that big over there. I thought they had quarantine laws and, you know, not as big of a dog culture. Dog, subtle dog logos everywhere. So. It's everywhere. They can't hunt, TC, so they, they don't <laughs> have the dogs to chase down the birds because that's just totally verboten. What? Uh, all right, what's next for you? I, my last one was Rory. Are you th are you through yours? I, I'm running low I, on mine, but I got a couple. All right. I feel like this is might tread into some of our long shot stuff. I, look, every 10 years or so, someone who's in their like late 30s or maybe early 40s contends or wins a Masters. I think Justin Rose can win the Masters. Whoa! He's playing so bad right now. I know. <laughs> no. I know. But that hasn't stopped like people who of his age, of his pedigree, with his course history, of like finding it in some moment. Like Justin Rose should have won the Masters when Sergio did. I think this course. I don't. It doesn't owe anyone anything. But there's think there's still one last glimmer of of Justin Rose contending here. I'm gonna stick my neck out and say I think he can do it. Okay. Is he gonna do it? Like sticking your neck out and say, it would be saying he's gonna win the Masters. I'm, I'm, I'm auditing you sticking your neck. We got you got to be able. We somebody else. I got a thick but short neck. So yeah. I, I don't have to stick it out that far. No, I don't think he'd win. I, I think Jason Day can win the Masters if that is my fallback position. I, mean, I think okay. a lot of people can win the Masters. I've really you thought know, about can. a lot of those. Uh, will and, they? Until I started diving into some of these guys' iron play and just being like, oh, it's just not See, it. See, it's vibes it, it's only. It's not right? it. Yeah, it's just, <laughs> on that we're same just note, hucking them on a Monday. <laughs> yeah, on that same note, I'm like, every year I feel like Adam Scott, I'm like, you know what, Adam Scott's like this premium player. Adam Scott's played like dog shit in the majors like the last three years. Yeah. And I get tricked into Adam Scott being, being this, you know, kind of trendy, really attractive pick. And it just doesn't. Like that's I've built that up in my head and it just does not match reality right now. So what do you got next, TC? Oh, that's a great question, Sally. I am gonna go, you know what? I think I was gonna go Ludwig, but you guys don't respect him, so I think I can take him with, with, with my last pick here. Uh, <laughs> wow. That's I'm gonna good. go and you know, I was thinking about Hideki. I think Hideki's playing really well. I think he's one of the guys that could truly like challenge Scotty, but the guy that made his debut last year, and I think this is the perfect course for him. And I think that if if things break right, Sahith. I think mm. Sahith is uh is you know just primed to have a really good showing here, top five or otherwise. KVV's frozen on my screen. I don't right. know if he's frozen on your screen. I am frozen on my own screen here, so I'm not sure what <laughs> we, you look you look absolutely <laughs> astonished. <laughs> Whoa! Since she dropped that Sonic pick, TC, I was like, "What?" The? Yeah, yeah, no, but I'm I'm keen to see. You know, it's 
it's it's a place that I feel like you you can kind of eliminate one side of the golf course. You can get a little bit wayward with it. You can scramble a little bit if you putt well. He's a great iron player. Um, you know, I uh, I was listening to Andy Johnson a couple weeks ago. He was saying basically all, so many holes out there make you like the ball's above your feet and you have to hit a fade or the ball's below your feet and you have to hit a draw. And I think when I think of a guy that's capable of stuff like that, I think of a guy like Sahith. And uh, I don't know. I just, I, I feel like he's a shot maker and plays with creativity. And I think this place will continue to bring out the best in him. I like that one. I think that that does everything you said makes a lot of sense there. But for somebody that doesn't make a lot of sense, if Speed. it's gonna happen, if it's gonna happen this week, it's not gonna make sense. Like, right? I, I, I've, I think we're a little removed from the time period of when you could just pencil him in at yeah. the Masters. Like, it's not been the smoothest ride uh, for him in the last five. I mean, he's finished fourth last year allegedly, but uh, it, it's been a little while since we've had a really good Spieth memory uh, at the Masters, and. I think we're going to see a glimpse this week. I think we're going to see plenty of glimpses this week. There's going to be a three under, you know, three under through five hole run or something like that. I just have severe doubt in his ability to maintain it for 72 holes right now. Like emotionally, I feel like he's still living and dying with every shot. And I, I still want it to happen just as badly, but I, I, I have to admit I've lost a little bit of faith on this front. And I'm, I, uh, I, I just can't picture like, again, I, I I'm psyched myself out right before we went on here, like looking at Scotty Scheffler's iron, like approach play page, because it is mind blowing how much better he is than everybody else. And I just truly Mark Ingram, uh, Derek Henry meme can't picture like speak, looking up at, at Derek Henry and taking him down right now. I really don't, uh, don't see how I hope to be wrong. It'd be wildly entertaining if speed does it. I think we'll see glimpses, but I, I don't know if I'm buying it. We'll see. I think one I thing, if if this speed, like speed seems to be putting better than he has in a while, who knows about the wrist? You know, I, I think, listen, he he's kind of like Mickelson in that, like, it doesn't really matter how he's been playing. He can kind of rock up and play well here. I think a weird X factor for Scotty might be the mallet putter as far as lag putting on these greens. Speed control gets a little bit more tricky with a lag putter, especially on very, very quick greens. Like, you lose a little bit of touch there. So I think... I don't know. I'm keen to see kind of how that plays out. That could that could be a little bit of an equalizer. For those that don't have it in front of them, the last uh, five years of results for speed at the Masters are T4, cut, T3, T46, T21. And before that, it was third, T11, T2, first, T2. He had, I was looking this up, I was talking about this with Porter before the tournament. He had five years where he could have won the Masters in a row. Like, it, it doesn't seem like, but he, one of those tiers, he, I think the year he finished 12th, he started the day like two shots back on Sunday. Like it, that was truly a crazy for this era, a, like a Nicholas esque sort of run where you're like, oh, every year for five years, I have a chance to win this. Okay. And, and this is, uh, we got a bunch of great, uh, some stats I'm going to break down a little, a little bit later. That came from Bet Spurts Golf. They have a, a little function there called the Rabbit Hole, which is incredible. But he, just to run down, he is over the last five years at Augusta, he is 32nd strokes gain off the tee, 19th in approach, uh, second around the greens, but 43rd in putting. So that, and all that equates out to like a strokes gain total. He's 15th best uh, over the last five years at Augusta, which is a far cry from yeah. like being set. He would have been second best at, min sure. at minimum over his, the first five years of his career at Augusta. So it's very different. It's, it's kind of weird. It seems like Spieth kind of turned his game around and then stopped playing well at Augusta. <laughs> I know. Do you guys right? think that Spieth could benefit in any way from like a sports psychologist or like a more disciplined, like, Hey, maybe don't, I, I just wonder if that, maybe that would rob him of some of his gifts where he's like, needs to talk through everything and needs to emote, or maybe if it was like worth trying for six months, I mean, I don't know. It didn't work out, but like, I do think Justin Thomas trying not to eat gluten or dairy or whatever that was like, Hey, I'm not good enough at this level. I want to try to get better. It made him worse. So maybe it would make speed worse, but maybe it would make him better. We're talking about Hovland, like tinkering and what I sort of wonder if Jordan would might benefit in some ways of being like, you know what, make. What if I didn't talk my way like through every single round? What if I didn't overthink every single shot? What if I went out and played more just on feels? I mean, Greller is a sports psychologist, right? <laughs> he's, he's certified now. He's, he's got 10,000 flying hours there, I'm pretty sure. But I, I also wonder, honestly, I, I, without looking this up, but just tossing out Rory, like Rory's clearly, clearly the exception here, and I can, I'll download him now. But 
if I pulled up the world rankings from the beginning of 2015, or maybe let's say, let's say the beginning of 2016 when Speed was coming off that crazy year, I know Rory's going to be up there in the top 10. I'm guessing he's probably maybe the only name up there, right? And it it just I think we all have a tendency to just hang on to these names for a bit too long when sure. it's like clearly not their time anymore. I mean, again, just like looking at at Scotty versus Jordan or like Hovland against Jordan. These dudes that are doing it way more consistently. Hovland's not the best example based on what we talked about, but yeah, top 10 in the world was Jordan Spieth, Jason Day, Rory, Bubba, Henrik Stenson, Ricky Fowler, Justin Rose, DJ, Jim Furyk, Patrick Reed. Then it goes Adam Scott, Sergio, Zach Johnson, Brandon Grace, Hideki, Kepka. Like what three of those guys are top players in the world now. I mean, it, it's, Probably yeah. just more natural than we care to admit for someone to have fallen off the pace. So it's hard. It's hard to be great for a long, sustained period of time. That's what's remarkable about Tiger yep. and Phil. Um, you got any more, TC? Uh, I had Ludwig's debut. How does okay. it go? You know, obviously, kind of wet. Like it's. I think it's going to put a lot of pressure on his wedge play, on his on his mid irons. There. He, I mean, he drives it so well. He's he should be a like. I think the floor is super high. I'm I'm keen to see where he can go with the ceiling this year, especially. Um, you know, I want to see, see be, some. Yeah. I'm excited yeah. to see it. I'd be I'd be surprised if it went really well. Like I'd be surprised if he top ten. I think that there's a, enough to learn about Augusta. I I, I don't know if he's going to make the putts and hit all the right tiers, like all the stuff that he's insanely good at, like off the tee, driving it very straight and long. Like doesn't play that well here. I mean, obviously, that plays well anywhere, but it doesn't gain as much as the courses that emphasize uh, driving accuracy a bit more than this one, you know? But so. I will say, Sally, on the flip side, everything you said about the long iron play and the 150 to 200, like, he's so good at those shots. I mean, he's an assassin from, from that distance. And I think, you know, whether the stats bear it out or not, I, I think he would consider <laughs> that the strength of his game. I see you looking it up right now. But, uh, <laughs> he's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'd be I mean, shocked if he's not a you know well regarded in that in that facet. But that's where I'm saying like I think the the ceiling could be you know 11th. I think the floor is probably top 25 though. Like I don't I don't see him playing poorly out there either. You know, there's just not that many ways that it can go wrong. I don't think. You are right. That the stats, on the bag. Yeah. Yeah. stats do bear that out. TC, you are okay. off the hook. And you, you've passed <laughs> the <day> golf challenge. <laughs> <laughs> My last one, and I'm going to throw a bonus one in here because I do feel like we obligated we should at least mention this name to this point. But the blow pig, yeah. uh, he a little a little bit of people falling asleep and forgetting the run that he had been on in the in the prior months. This is his first Masters. Um, he is plus 3,300 to win, and he has been at minimum one of the five best players in the world over the last several months. Just feel like that he's getting a little bit sleeped on in the same kind of category as Zalatoris. He's been on a ton of leaderboards. Made a ton of birdies. His approach play is really, really good. Um, I, I I would not be surprised to see the blow pig. Uh, that's Wyndham Clark, for those that have not been listening to the pod recently or that are new listeners to a Masters preview. Uh, that's Wyndham Clark. And I, I, I'm, I'm excited to see what he's going to do this week. So, uh, And last one. Again, this one jumped off the page just looking at numbers. We have to at least mention it, even if we don't believe he's going to win. Xander. I, you know what? That was one of my that I scratched off the last minute. I think he can win the Masters. He definitely can win the Masters. I, I think that the Masters has had some, you know, people who have knocked on the door a little bit and have come around. Like he's a, this is the one of the, I think the right the major that he's had the most success in. Sorry, the one he had a, a really good chance to win the 2019 Masters when Tiger won. 2021, 2020, yep. Uh, so, but he didn't. I, he didn't. Right, but you know, some of those that doesn't things are mean he won't ever control. do it though. Right. You know that that's kind of where I think it. I mean, I feel how much better do you feel about Xander's chances than Cantlay's? That's a great. I was going to say, like, who do you let's say you had to take both of them for the rest of the year? Are you taking Xander or Cantlay Xander. in all events? I, is it just all events? And yeah, do they all, all count the same, or is it majors count for more? Like, this is we'll a, say, we'll say majors count double, but all events, all events. I think I would take Cantlay, majors, all I would 100% take Xander. Yeah, the heart of the event, I would definitely take, uh. I'm taking Xander. Xander is is underrated on this show. I'll continue to defend him. Uh, maybe just because he's a, a a strokes gain uh, savant, if you will. But he's like second or third and best player in the world in consistency with sure. how often he just beats the field. I know he doesn't win enough. I don't. I won't dispute that part. But he 
that doesn't mean he'd get, he's not an unbelievably good golfer. There are some Andrew, masters, Sully, where you don't have to do like you don't have to shoot 66. Yeah. Right. If he goes out and shot 69, 68, 70, 71, that could win the masters some years. Like some guys, you just don't get dragged down by yep. someone who has an incredible out of nowhere week, a Mike Weir, a Zach Johnson, whatever. And that's your masters. But sometimes like you're going to get walked down by a special performance. Yep. So I think 100%, like what we've talked about is he doesn't always close well. He doesn't do that special thing. Sometimes you just be average and or a little bit better than average and the field breaks your way, the weather breaks your way. That could totally be Xander. Totally. Xander to me feels like Justin Herbert. Oh, that's an unbelievable comp. I cannot debate <laughs> that a, a, a little pod. bit. <laughs> Good job, DC. Um, I, I, I would put him. This seems like Brock Purdy or something. <laughs> 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 I might say Xander's closer to Joe Burrow. Like, no, Burrow's he's gotten so really much. close. Uh, Herbert hasn't even been close. Come on, Burrow's been really, oh. really close, and it just hasn't happened. I, I'm, I, I think it's I, a little disrespectful. One of my dreams is to have the golfer slash quarterback comp pod. So yeah. put that, file that away. Everybody, okay. do some research. I know I'm I not a ball have, knower. I'd like to be involved in that. I would though. love I to I have can, you involved. I could in sprinkle that, that in. Can I can I hit you guys with a few a few uh, stats and notes that I that I uncovered that I think will can Please. inform the rest of the show as we get into you know a little bit of odds making a little bit of stuff on the course but um, again this is from Bet Spurts uh, the, the the rabbit hole function they have there which just ton of great course history stuff over the last five years the best putter at Augusta National who do you think it is off the top of your head who's the best putter in strokes gained at Augusta over the last five years TC is going to get it. So do they have to play in all five? So I, I, if you've played in at least two, I'm counting, uh, counting you here. So I did a minimum of eight rounds within this. So. JT Poston. Your boy Cam Smith has been the best putter wow, at, uh, at Augusta National. And second best, again, he's only played in two of them, Will Zalatoris. Really? Second best. Fast he's, greens. He's you know, had really good. Stroke. Really good putting success in the two masters he's played. Different in. putter though. I'm still I'm still wanting to see that long putter hold up under some pressure. We'll see. Just an interesting note, I thought. Yeah. The leaders in strokes gain approach over the last five years at the Masters. It goes Scotty Scheffler, Dustin Johnson, Justin Thomas, Colin Morikawa, Xander Shoffley, Hideki Matsuyama, Patrick Cantley. Ball hitters only at Augusta, but Absolutely. Scotty Scotty leads the way, and DJ is still second on that list despite not being uh, at his strongest over the last couple of years. Very, so he did win one of them in there. Solid, very interesting. Like that was the thing. Every time I go out there, I'm like, man, there's just so many humps and bumps in these fairways. There's just not a lot of flat lies out here, and or there's you got a downhill lie, you got an uphill lie, all that. It's it's really interesting. We didn't mention Morikawa at all. He's not coming in on any sort of form. If Morikawa wins. This week, he's three-fourths of the way to the career Grand Slam. You know, we haven't mentioned DJ at all. Like, I'm keen to see if DJ's got – DJ could be one of those guys like like Mickelson that, you know, is, he can rock up to Augusta, play well, and, you know, not have to come in in any form. He just kind of summons it, you know. We'll see. I was kind of banking on a little bit of that last year in majors with DJ, and that didn't happen. Um, so I, I would be more, I'd yeah. be more surprised this year. I really would. I mean, I, I, I thought he would fit that bill last year, and he just he disappointed. I almost feel like DJ last year was kind of like, all right, I'm, I'm turning off for a little bit. I'm, I'm hanging out, uh, powering down. <laughs> yeah. This year it's like, all right, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try a little bit harder. So yeah, we'll uh, see. or you know, I've got my, you know, it's it's year two of kind of these guys' routine and figuring out, hey, what works and what doesn't, you know. What year? How old is DJ? Is he 40 yet? Yeah, he's probably 41, 41. 42 now. So he could be he could be my Justin Rose category of like a 41 year old, a guy who's had success who could come out and just play what better than like his current form. Oh, so he's 39, 39, 39. 39 in okay. 10 months. I apologize. Uh, fake news. Patrick Cantlay's putter at Augusta has killed him. Really? He is eighth over the past five years in strokes gained tee to green, fifth off the tee, seventh in approach, and second overall in ball striking, 62nd in putting. Wow. Yeah. He feels like something shit. that may be able to turn like turn around. Like maybe we've seen his floor there. And you know, he's uh I do feel like some of the stuff that Cantley does off the tee doesn't necessarily like it it doesn't get him as as big of an advantage as it does at other courses. But right. his approach play from that long distance is is yeah. really good, and I don't know. I found that I found that jarring uh, that it was just basically putting that would keep him from having an immaculate uh, Masters record. 
What also surprised me, Brooks Kepka, very similar profile. Third in strokes gained tee to green, third off the tee, 12th in approach, fourth overall in ball striking, 56th in putter. It is the putter at uh, Augusta that has killed. Now, is, is, is that just weighing, is, is the one year just weighing that down for Brooks, though? The one year of bad putting? When he had the yeah. he crawling like an army guy up the uh, yeah. 15th hill, the green of 15. I mean, that was, it, it was like he was just sticking it to Brandle like that, that year. So it was proving do, he could play regardless. Yeah. I do feel like the we, we've we got some high variance or kind of high variable years stuck in there you've got the fall masters in these stats which is a little bit or a lot bit uh you know on kind of inconsistent with the with the rest of the sample size and then you've got last year which is extremely extremely soggy and you know you got all the rain and just the course was playing outrageously soft so, sure but he would have putted really well last year to i mean he held the lead on sun, going to sunday so he i would say that the year before when he missed the cut and then yeah. also the year when he missed the cut, when he was really hurt. I mean, the, the injuries, yeah. I would think. You know. He putted very poorly in 2022 at the Masters, and he putted very poorly uh, in 2021 at the Masters. But I bet in 2019, he putted really well because he you know, was the leader, like with, or not the leader, but he was in the mix, like going down to. to I, I don't have that level of detail, but sure. it's worth noting. He's had some, not, not, he doesn't see it, doesn't see it great. Also injury related on putting, I would think is the one thing that's kind of like, yeah. Right, you should be able. You should be able to do this if, if even if you're injured. Rory McIlroy, second in strokes gained off the tee over the last five years, fifty fourth in approach. That's it right there. He does not hit the ball nearly close enough, especially for where he drives it uh, to win or to compete at, at the highest level. Of the and Masters heard those Justin Ray stats that we were talking about on the preview on the on the recap last night. Like that seems like something that he's keyed in on and is working his ass off on. Yeah. Right. Be very keen to see. That's just if he hits hits his irons well, he won't finish outside the top three. I don't think there's any formula where he would finish outside the top three if he has a great approach week. But again, this is very different golf shots than the normal stock shots. I think Rory is very good at stock shots, and I he's not shown the ability to hit that fade off a ball above your feet and to have it have the right spin to land and stay on a tier. And, and I I I was looking at that back right tier, the sixth green today, just looks like the hardest golf shot in the world. And I just don't, I don't look at that and think like, oh yeah, Rory's going to hit that totally. Like he's totally got that distance control and all that dialed. I, I see that there'd be a lot more guys I would pick to take that shot uh, versus him. That's probably where some of the discipline stuff comes in that he's talking about right though. He has to understand like, hey, if I have to hit a fade off of a, a ball above my feet, maybe it's better to literally just hit it on the left side of the green and try to, yeah. you know, instead of short siding myself, instead of hitting it long, instead of try, pulling off something I'm not great at let me take the safe target let me try to lag putt it and and get around that way uh last one i'm gonna have you guys try to guess this as best you can there's three guys in the field that are ranked in the top half of the field in every strokes gain category over the last five years just three of them so like i'll give you a hint scotty's not one of them because he's below average on putting uh at the masters over the last uh five years but three rom, rom is one that is correct No way. Nope. We, uh, I surprised you with Zalatoris. Zalatoris is another one. And the third one you probably won't get because he's doesn't have the best master's record. He's just barely above average in everything. So I'll, I'll give you, uh, I'll give you five seconds to guess if you really want to, but you're probably not going to get it. Terrell Hatton. Kind of close. Okay. Region, not quite the same country, but region. Shane Lowry Blandy. is the answer. Okay. Shane Blandy. Uh, so yeah, I found that interesting. Um, all right, we got a couple questions to get to, a couple other things to get to before we do that. Of course, I want to give a shout out to our friends at AT&T. Connecting changes everything. Today being connected is essential. Connectivity is truly the bridge to possibility, improving the way we move through our daily lives, succeeding in work and school, and having access to opportunities that may not have been possible before. That's why AT&T invests expertise and resources in the ne network constantly so customers can keep connected with every aspect of their lives. After all, connecting people is what AT&T does best, and each connection leads to greater possibility. Connecting changes everything, AT and T. All right. Speaking of you... connecting, I just realized I don't have my Ethernet cord plugged in. I'm just just straight Wi-Fi through oh, my AT and T router, and it's tonight, and it's still working extremely well. So, yeah. Um, you want to talk a little odds for a second, or you want to get into some questions? What's next? 
Let's, we, talk, let's talk some questions, yeah, and then we'll get back talk. to odds and some underdogs. Haters are always saying you don't take questions solid. All right, exactly. well, I, I always sneak one or two in at, at minimum to, uh, to you know. All right, we got one from Wilksy93. Who winning would be the, quote, worst thing to happen to golf? I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna, I think I'm going to direct this one to TC. Oh, man. Uh, we're, we're at this seminal moment. I would say it's Team Rose, right? Like, he's going to pour <laughs> cold water on – I love just that. The momentum of like, all right, like, you know, Team Rose just, you know, like leading after round one and then gets it done. And it's like, worst what are we thing. doing Come here? on, TC. Come on. You know what? I'm going to interject and say the worst thing that could happen to be if Sergio was a two time Masters winner because Sergio would be so smug and so like arrogant and shitty about it. <laughs> I, I, that's way worse than Justin Rose. Is Sergio gonna rock up wearing his his outrageous fireballs gear? I mean, they they were wearing <laughs> yeah. some provocative stuff last week. A bunch of them didn't wear that stuff last year. It was, seemed like we were wondering if they maybe got a message, but a, a couple of them did, right? Like, like a bunch Bryce of them had logos at least on. Yeah. Like Phil was definitely. I bet more of them do wear it this year. It's like a, a defiance, a little bit. I'm saying you guys get out for... there tomorrow and and you know it's true. do some tracking, right? I want to know if Blanc, if if uh, Moronk is wearing his cliques gear. Maybe okay. like I feel like that purple, that purple and gold, that specialty kind of, you know, that alternate uniform that the cliques have would look really, really good with with a green jacket. You know, the city, their city connect uniforms. TC. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, albino blue sheep. I'm gonna. I think I know who to direct this one to. Is tree gate still an issue? Have they checked all the trees on the course, Kevin? I, I don't know why I'm gonna throw this one to you. Man, I got to be honest, like all the people who make that joke, like, fuck you. Like the people almost died last year when those trees came down and they did actually go out and make sure that no oh, more no, no. trees were going to fall. Oh, you're right. I think it's hilarious because I asked that question and you tweeted it out. Like yeah. you were the brave one that tweeted out and you got dunked on by a bunch of idiots. You were exactly right on this. That was a freaking crazy thing that happened. But they didn't test all the trees on the golf course. They did. They, they tested, tested the trees. a ton of the soil yeah. around it. We had people tell us that they absolutely did. They wanted to make sure they, liability-wise, they had to do it. They couldn't yeah. like sit here and be like, well, who, who cares if a bad just luck absolutely dodged a complete bullet here that this didn't kill anyone that literally two trees fell on both sides of like a 28 oh, year old woman and almost killed her and we completely are going to just let's we'll just roll them back out to the masters if you if the you know they get killed they're just must be a woke idiots no like they actually were concerned that more trees might come down they had to cut down a few trees that they were worried about but it was hilarious how hard you, people just were <laughs> shitting on you it was very much a oh man i don't I, I agree with you, Kevin, but I'm not wading into these waters. You're going to fight this one on your own. Can you imagine if they would have postponed final round for like a whole day or if two days or killed, three days? Wouldn't they have? I mean, there's no way yeah. they could have. No, but and it if, they was didn't, not, if people weren't yeah. killed, but if but if the okay. testing didn't go well and they're like, sure. we tested them and, you know, these conditions, it's it's like the Eddie, you know, it's like, it's like, hey, we're not, we're not holding the event because the conditions aren't right. You know, that well, would have been wild. It was not stormy enough for those trees to fall in that was the thing it wasn't like take shelter this is a dangerous enough storm like for trees to have fallen that was the part that was free and they have like at augusta i think uh one of the guys alan bastable wrote a piece about this for digest they, they have like a horticulturist and a tree expert on staff yes. at augusta who came out and was like oh shit and they they basically said that like the wind tunnels on the the holes make for wind tunnels and so that's why like it windier than it seems so like normal conditions you're just laughing at me because you're, <laughs> no, it's the you're best. like you're still trying <laughs> to explain idiots. this way but they have a horticulturist you don't <laughs> understand you idiots do they also is, is part of it and i'm not sure if the trees that fell like they're like constantly like moving full-sized full-grown yeah. trees right that, like that's part of that never really playing god a little bit that yeah that they're not they won't say whether those trees were like ones that have been replaced there from from what i've seen um, if you could, uh, Magic City golfer, if you could make one change to one hole at Augusta National, what would it be? TC, I'll throw this one to you first. Um, mm, a specific one would be I would bring 16 back to the original with the creek and to the other side. Yeah, I, I don't know. I just think 16, like it was kind of a mirror image of of what 12 when they first built it and the creek was going through it i don't i just don't love 16 i don't love the, the pond i don't love what that greens turned into um you know that's that's my one hole 
uh, you know, kind of answer. I would say the other thing, just walking around out there the other day, like just get rid of that, that, that second cut. It's, there's no reason for it whatsoever. It's not punishing. It's not, if anything, it's actually bailing these guys out a little bit and keeping them from running into the pine straw. And it would just look clean and, and delightful all around. I think it's, you know, no more second cut. Abolish it, especially on the third hole. Love that. I'm going to take, uh, my answer is different than it was this morning, but I, I did a little walk today. I really dislike the trees left of 15. And I get why you had to do it. Like you had to make that shot. Like you may have to make that tee shot have some consequence. Like there wasn't any punishment really for missing left. But if you took the trees out left of 15 and just made it a huge bank that is going to run down like into pine straw or something down there or come to like, I'm thinking of that, like the hill on five is so dramatic. Like if you miss short of the bunkers on five, the ball is above your feet and you have 240 yards into a par four. And it's a really, really, really challenging shot. If you could somehow simulate, I know the, the terrain kind of goes more towards the 15 green than and compared to number five, but if you could somehow similar to 13, give a ball above your feet, a shot that's going to be really, really hard to execute over the water, hold the green withdraw spin and all of those things. Uh, if you could make that punishment left instead of just the trees, it's cause a punch out. That would be really interesting. You give somebody a chance. Like if you're down three with a few holes to go, like you might try the hero shot. Whereas now you have no chance to try the hero shot. If you miss way left, there's a bunch of examples of trees that can come out and adding contouring to make it a little bit more interesting rather than just, you know, I, I, I don't love the trees out there and, and the second cut in a lot of ways, but that one came to me today. I'm sure that's probably way harder to do than how I describe, but if anybody can do it, it's Augusta. So uh, that that's one I'd like to see change. I would blow up four and start all over. Mm. I don't like four. It just it requires one shot. It's really hard to even a good shot to make a birdie. If you miss long, you're totally screwed. If you miss left and the pin is left, you're completely screwed. That's I mean, I just it's not a very interesting hole to me. Like even the par threes. I can sort of take your leave in some ways at, at Augusta. And I would just love to see four be something different. Uh, even if it was like a, you know, a two tiered, but like, instead of like a front to back tier, like a, a left and a lower tier so that you could somehow use the slope somehow to get to some pins. You had to take, or you had to take on that bunker if you were going to go at the a pin on the right, but you weren't completely, you know, dead if you missed it. I, I just, it's, it's bad. Hmm. Counterpoint. I think the, it's maybe one of the shots that favors a fade at Augusta and you yep. kind of need, need that a little bit. Um, but I, I totally agree. I think the length of the hole and the, the shape of the green are kind of out of balance now. And they've changed that. The, the fourth green is they've added some depth behind on the back yeah. part of the fourth green as I, I mean, I, I walked around and saw it today and I, I don't, I don't know Augusta well enough detail in person to like notice the changes. I know somebody kind of pointed them out, but it does look like a more doable shot now. And I think what I don't love about like the four or five stretch is just, kind of hard for the sake of hard whereas it's kind of a you know, stopper after these yeah. dynamic second third holes you're, you're like right. All right adding down the hatches and then six is depending upon where the pin is on six right. i really think six is an underrated hole but yeah i do too that's getting more and more hang on for dear life as we go along here totally dad jenkins our guys used to say and it's the fifth hole which no sports rider has ever seen <laughs> they would know it's the farthest <laughs> away from the clubhouse spot. no one would walk all the way out there they just pick them up coming back down seven <laughs> it is uh, very tough Solly, I, I think other things that i'd change just not like kind of to run with this I, I i think seven i don't know i think seven should be almost awkwardly short like i, I wish seven was back to being a little if it's a flip wedge, that's fine. But I think even make that green more severe and make it tough to control your spin in there. And then I think the other one is nine. I think nine green, I wish that was back to like that original boomerang shape. I think there's nothing more provocative and eye-catching in golf than like a cool boomerang green. Can um, I throw out a format change? Yeah. Please. I want the I want the playoff to start on 11 and then just be sudden death from there. 11, 12, 13. You keep going until you know, some guy gets eliminated. So you get to like aim in it, corner is the beginning 18, yeah. of uh, a playoff. That'd be sweet. Why not just uh, start on 12? You could start on 12, but I think like that second shot into 11 is really cool. I, it would be weird to finish on 12 with no crowd around the green is yeah. the only thing. Yeah, that's true. I don't know. You Same can't with get 13. that close to, I mean, I can't get that close to some of the greens as it is. Like it, they've had playoffs that finished on 10 and like, the way the crowd is, it's like way far removed back from in the behind the green where yeah. you can't get close. I I don't know. But how cool would it be to like 
I don't know. You're right that the crowd wouldn't, if it's on 13, like if it ended there, crowd's not at all anywhere yeah. near that green. But like the best holes at Augusta, like 11, 12, 13, yeah. you know, or if they get all the way to 15, imagine. I'd that. say 15 would be. 15, really would be sick. 15 into 16 would be awesome like there's you can fit so many people around that if you hole. go 15 16 17 then that'd be you know i don't love 17 can't go 17 but... <laughs> go skip over to three or something from from, <laughs> from there you cannot go to 17 but... i don't know why like i'm kind of coming around on 17 i think 17 is cool the where, where that it's green, green sits Fine. yeah I mean, you Just... know what maybe they should play a cross country hole Ooh. The, you know, say, hey, we're going to we're going we're gonna to do a cross. All right. We got some stuff we got to cover before we get into cross country <laughs> holes in the playoffs at, the, at Augusta. I, as greatly as I appreciate it. Let's do this now. Who won't win? This is a game we always play before majors. It has to be a relatively a person relatively high up on the on the on the leaderboard to to uh, to justify the pick. You got to you're going to really stick your neck out. I know here, KVV here in a second. But who won't win? Uh, Justin Thomas. We giving uh, him passing grade on that. Kind of, I mean, he's a top 20 player. We, we just looked up his results. He's finished what in the he's top 40 to one to win. <sighs> what was our, what's, that, this, what's been our, our minimum in the past? I mean, it's a, it's an eye test kind of thing. All right. Hideki won't, win. won't win. That, that counts. Wow. That counts. Okay. Disrespectful to the Japanese. I, but, yeah. Not the Japanese <laughs> in general. I, this is just about a man, not, a, not an entire culture. <laughs> You know I love the Jays. Where's TC gonna go with this? I am. Uh, first of all, Taylor Gooch will not win. Okay. Uh, Are you sure? I'm sticking his neck. I out. am. I am. And then Xander will not win. I'm just gonna do it. It's. I'm putting my money where my mouth is. Rory won't win. Wow, he's trying to double reverse it. Yeah, I am. He's I am trying but, to. Uh, <laughs> I, I mean, listen. I would totally eat. That. I would be very, very happy to eat that on Sunday night if it's not the case. But. Uh, I know I'm not going to get invited to the block party, but he will not win. Mm. Uh, let me run through the odds. Just uh, we haven't specifically listed them, but I, I did find some interesting uh, notes in all of this. With Scotty is plus 400, um, the biggest favorite, the lowest favorite, however you want to say it, since Tiger in I forget what year, but it's been lowest lowest odds since Tiger. Rory's plus 1,000, Rom plus 1,200. These are brought to you by the uh, FanDuel Sportsbook, by the way. Xander Shoffley, odd subject to change, of course. Xander Shoffley plus 1,400. Kepka plus 1800, Hideki plus 2000, Speeth is plus 2200, uh, Ludwig and Neiman are plus 2500, Victor Hovland plus 3000, the Blow Pig, Wyndham Clark plus 3300, Cantley, Zalatoris, and Cam Smith are all plus 3500, JT plus 4000, Bryson, DJ, Tommy Fleetwood, and uh, Matt Fitzpatrick plus 4500, Big Tone and Shane Lowry plus 5000, Cam Young and Colin Morikawa plus 5500. Wow, for Morikawa. Uh, Sam Burns, Max Homa, Sahit Tagala, plus 6,000. Tyrrell Haddon, plus 6,500. Russell Henley and Jason Day, plus 7,000. Brian Harmon, Minwoo Lee, Patrick Reed, plus 7,500. That's 75 to 1. You didn't put the cat on here. So. Plus 20,000. He's plus 20,000? <laughs> yeah. Whoa. I might throw a tenor on that. <laughs> <laughs> According to, to, our, to FanDuel, that's what I'm looking at right here. I, usually they kind of throw them in at like 50 to one, even yeah. minimum of like, all right, well, I know a jillion people are going to bet this no matter what. You get rinsed if uh, the cat has an incredible week. <laughs> what sticks out to you among all that, TC? I always like to play in that plus 2,500 to plus 4,000 category. I just think there's value there. Um, I think who, the who would you pick in that? Yeah, so who, who would you pick in Zalatoris that? Zalatoris yeah. at plus 3,500. Blow pig? Can I talk into the blow pig? Yeah. No, you really can't. I'm you can good. never, ever talk to you see <laughs> the blow pig again. Again, Homa, Sahith, plus 6,000. Like, I think that's there's some value there. Russell Henley's coming in in really good form. I think Russell Henley at some point is going to, like, maybe run one of these things down if things break right. He's plus 7,000. Can so, I confess? I've I've sprinkled multiple Russell Henley bets over the course of the last several months for him at Augusta. Like he, he's the name that, like, sticks out to me of, like, data golf approach play like all of these things of like i i don't get why he's not under 50 to one for what he actually produces i know he doesn't necessarily win a ton of these big events he's got decent course history at augusta just seems like he's kind of jumping off the page as a decent value down the page so yeah i'm, I'm with the zalatoris blow pig uh section is, is what i'm looking at really closely i got it i gotta say one hour and six minutes into this almost as we're recording here tc we're looking right at a list. I just said the name and we, you like breeze past it. Didn't even mention it. Not doing it. Not doing it. We're just, we're going to, we're going to slow play. Are you, are you talking Tommy? 
I am, of course. I'm glad you knew who I was referring to, but you're yeah. just ignoring him completely and and uh, you know not going to no, ride I'm, for him this week. You're off the bandwagon. No, wow. No, I'm not off the bandwagon at all. He's he's in some of my my plays on the FanDuel stuff. I just it's I'm trying to I'm trying to be cool. Okay, man. And you're you're kind of blowing up my spot. <laughs> I'm just trying to get you, uh, you know, you can't celebrate it. If you don't, it's called on the preview show. You cannot celebrate it come Sunday. That's so, for sure. I think if you can stomach it, that Patrick Reed is the good. Pretty no, good no, so. can't stomach it. Can't okay. stomach it. I'm just telling I'm you. I'm not saying you're wrong. You you put a hypothetical out there that I can't stomach. Can is Min Woo Lee good? We don't know. We do not. We are still collecting data from the we crash. Simply <laughs> don't know what we he don't has. know what he has. He's <laughs> unstable. <laughs> Um, there are some course changes this year. There's a new T on the second hole. It has moved back into the left. Shout out to our guy, Denny McCarthy. Rory kind of downplayed the, the, the impact of this one, but, um, I went back there and tried to see, you can't really get a good view of it. Um, I don't know if you got a better view than I did when you were there TC, but, uh, not really. It, I mean, it's, it should suit Rory's eye. That's for sure. Yeah. It, it makes it a little hard to get down the hill and it, it puts, you know, woods and, and long irons back into guys' hands trying to trying to get to it. And uh, I think some of the short hitters can still, depending on the wind and the firmness, but can still hit it at the bunker and not get there. So yeah. um, I think that was kind of part of what I think was a little disappointing or underwhelming about it to Rory, I think. But uh, yeah, that's <laughs> that's one of the, the biggest the biggest changes that we'll see. And some uh, some changes to four green and changes to six green uh, as well, right? To the back right of uh, of six green looks a lot more challenging now. Yeah. So. And then even two green, I guess. Sean, Sean Martin had some great stuff uh, on this. Just kind of, he got some great intel. I guess they've softened kind of the back side of some of these bunkers where, you know, you could lag putt into them and basically use that slope on the, on the back side of the bunker, especially on two there to, to kind of use a, a kind of use it as a backstop. So I think on two, that should be a little bit more, uh, a little bit more dynamic of, of, a, of a, a whole location there. So yeah, we'll see. I mean, shit, you know, can't let me maybe doing a Delta activation down the left side, down at the, down at the uh, Delta 360 Delta. thing down there on the left yeah, side. You can, use, so. you can use the app for that stuff these days. I just don't know how much you guys need. You guys need to really visit the counter, but uh, question from J M C C A A O three over under on tiger shooting 71 in round one. That's a good, good middle pick there. Cause I would have. Yeah. Probably gone like seven, right on 71. Right. Yeah. I think, I think over. I okay. think over as well, and that's weather related. Okay. If there's a curveball in there, I just don't think with his health, uh, you know, wind, rain, whatever is yeah. coming on Thursday. Maybe, who knows? Maybe he doesn't have to play in any of it, but uh, if it was going to be good get, weather. Yeah, and we're supposed to get wind on Friday too, yeah. right? And then kind of calms down on the weekend. If he can scrape around a 72, though, and then the wind comes and he's like one of the few dudes who can hit really good iron shots and handle it, that'll be fun. I hope he doesn't get like a late early uh, so that we get some time to recover uh, for him. You know, get it, get the specialist in there and just work <laughs> on my body. But uh, I, yeah, I, I'm still, I'm still not willing to give up hope that uh, he could be, I don't think he can win, but no joke reports it. were today that he was striping it around the back nine, like hit some really, really good shots. So a couple of, I ran a couple of buddies of mine out there. They were like, dude, he stuffed it in there on 16, like hit some, he had a couple really, really good shots on the back nine today. And now it's, it's Monday, but that's you know that's a good sign, good 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 thing to hear at least in terms of what we're trying to expect from Tiger. I think he goes under seventy one. I'll take the under there, and then I think he you know he just gets tired as the week goes along and kind of kind of devolves from there. We shall see. Anything else you guys uh, want to cover here before we wrap? Solid. Anything? Good. Uh, good question from Brock Kinzer. Uh, who will be the memorial or the ceremonial first tee participants at the hundredth playing of the Masters, which? What iteration of the Masters is this one? 89th so. or 88th, something like that. 20, uh, 1934 was the first one. So 100 okay. would be in 2035 then, I think. Yeah. Or okay. Something like that. 2035, mid, mid 2030s. Yeah. Who's, who's I try to think about this there. one a little bit today. And I mean, Tom Watson obviously would expect to be there. Um, At 100? So he'd be 80. 11 years from now? Yeah. No, he's not. He's 67? 68 so he wouldn't be 89 11 uh, years hello excuse me not i'm sorry <laughs> i mean i but, feel like gary player is still gonna be there he probably will be there yeah he'll probably be younger by then Tom watson is 74 so in 11 okay. years will be 85 will he yeah. still be hitting yeah be i think so i think so um i think gary will hit one into his 90s like deep into his 90s 
I think he will want to go. He will go as long as they will have him. Have you'll have to yeah. like with a cane like they used to yank gonzo off the stage of the muppets they'll have to pull a great player <laughs> off the stage to not hit the ceremony which i kind of you know what sneak i'm not this is not based on intel this is not based on anything other than a hunch i think there's a chance that this is jack's last uh mm. ceremony with Tucson. i wouldn't he'll be surprised yeah. he'll do it and then he'll say in the in the presser afterwards it's, i just i think that's enough for me like i'm i'm blessed i love this place but i'm not going to do it anymore. It's a great question, though, because I don't know where I go next. I mean, right? Faldo's a three-time champion. It's kind of... I, I mean, see you're, that. You're, yeah, do they want, like, do they want that? Like, I could, I, I, that's where it's like, is it a popularity contest? Or is it recognizing past Crenshaw. champions? Crenshaw is right? super interesting. He's won twice. Then, But if you're inviting Crenshaw, do you invite Jose Muriel of Fabel? Like, he won twice in the 90s. Like, when does... Then it starts to feel like, all right, well, I don't know if Jose Muriel of Fable should share the same stage as Jack Nicholas as well. So sure. do you yeah. need to have then like when do you have the Phil conversation? I don't I mean, think Phil, Phil may live forever, forever though, right? <laughs> so he may be playing the long game on us. He might he might do it for the two hundred. If he gets Masters. on that Bryson plan, they live to 120. I could see Phil. Uh, maybe they've been talking about that. Guy. But the, I think you're going to run into an issue that they haven't run into. I don't have the full list of ceremonial starters, but like Sam Snead was a three-time champion. He was a, he was a ceremonial starter. Obviously, Byron Nelson, he was a two-time champion, and he he was one of them. Was Jimmy Demerit ever a, a honorary starter? I don't know the answer to that one. Was Hogan so, ever? No. So I don't know. I don't know how you – guys that have won it two, three times, I don't know how, who, how you choose Steve? from that list. <laughs> speed <laughs> i think he'll, speed will get a chance to do it before phil does i don't see a scenario where phil gets to be the unless something changes dramatically in the next 10 years or so and when does tiger become one of them or will he ever want to i, like I, I think he probably will but yeah. i think he's going to hang around you know for a while doing this tournament uh yeah despite what he said about i'm not going to play if i'm just a ceremonial guy i, yeah. I think he'll, he'll like it too much to yeah I yeah, got it one last question. Replenishing the coffers as far as because there's nobody really in the field right now, right? You would think for 12 years from now or 13 years from now, you know? Yeah. I got one last question. If Scotty wins, are we on Grand Slam watch? Let's yes. say he wins by four. Like it's a clear decision. If that's the case, victory. we're on Grand Slam watch now. Okay. Right. I mean, I think yeah. the question is, are we on Grand Slam watch right now? Are we? For sure. For sure. Do I think he's going to win the Grand Slam? Of course not. But, like, it's a totally different level. Um, it would be extremely surprised. I mean, if he won two this year, it would be an incredible sure. accomplishment. But, I mean, he might – if he does it, he might win them. Like, he, if he does it, he probably wins them, like, all by at least four. I think he might truly go run away and hide if he, if he actually does it. Like, I I, uh, I don't know. I, I think there's I, there's absolutely reason to think that there could be a Grand Slam. It's – his open championship record is a little mixed, isn't it? I feel like that might be the one sort of where maybe he hasn't quite figured out the intricacies of that. But also, like, he's just truly the best ball striker to come along in a long time, so he could probably figure it out, like, very easily. Uh, I don't know. It's, I mean, has he contended in an open championship? That He was close at, uh, at, he was T8 in 2021 at Royal St. George's, and it cost me so much money you missed eight footer because i would have won a lot of money on in a fantasy pool uh anyways he's t21 in 2022 t23 in 2023 so definitely his worst his worst major to date but i mean yeah it's like more than one in 300 i guess but it's a extreme long shot sure. I mean, i'm sure you could probably bet it at 100 to one or something like he's that. he's the only guy we can have this conversation about. totally if you if 100%. i said oh rom is gonna win it i mean i know that some people may be in this podcast have predicted. So I, some of them were 25 percent right last year that's all i'm saying <laughs> that's all i'm saying nobody was making fun of it fun of it after the masters last year but uh um, it's yeah it's interesting because it's i feel like we've got some pretty agnostic uh major venues for the kind of for the remainder especially with pinehurst and Troon um that yeah should suit scotty i mean i don't think there's anything that doesn't suit scotty but which yeah, i mean I don't like, know. It, the grand slam is unlikely but like there's a very decent chance we get a pursuit of one i mean think back to like sure. 2015 speed obviously did not win the grand slam but like that was a very real pursuit of the grand slam yeah. that's obviously a much more realistic result than him winning it but i think we i mean we are talking about it and believing it truly in 2015 i think we can get there this year as well i'm so. in Let's do it. All right. First of all, we haven't mentioned Brian Harmon's name. I don't think he, like I think he's gonna make the cut. I don't, you know, I don't think like it's I don't think this place suits him all 
all that well, but like we just had to like he won the last major. So I feel like we just have to mention okay. his name. Of course. Thank just you. to just to read into the record. Here. We did mention his name at plus seventy five hundred. So Okay. Just for the um do we think any of the amateurs play well? I haven't thought about that enough. If I can totally go to an opposite direction of your question, CC, just to make sure a name that I really wanted to get in here, Corey Connors. He's got great long iron play. He's got a great course history at Augusta. I think he's plus 8,000. I don't know if he's necessarily going to win, but if you're looking for somebody to fill out a fantasy team of some kind, I think Corey Connors is jumping off the page as a name down the, down the board. So I think, uh, I think if there is an amateur that's going to play well, I could see Stuart Hagestad coming in and playing well. He's in the field again. I think, and then I think that Neil Shipley. Kid I was well. going to mention him. A buddy of mine yeah. texted me today and said Neil Shipley's a stud. Should I lay some money on Shipley? And I was like, literally, I'm not the Don't person ask to ask for betting. But <laughs> I did ask Jordan about it, and she was like, Oh yeah, he's kind of a stud. Like I, I he seems very like very intelligent, very smart, yeah. very switched on. So. Uh, I'm setting aside my buck tech. I was going to say, yeah. this is a big <laughs> that's, that's for you. a big endorsement. <laughs> yeah. Huge endorsement. Yeah. Uh, some other guys that I, you know, like I know it's, I think Cam Davis is a sneaky, sneaky good. Like, hey, if you're, I think if you're looking to fill out a, you know, fan duel kind of, you know, uh, kind of fantasy lineup, I think somebody like him, I think this play, I think Eckroat's game matches up everywhere. Obviously, he's a, a uh, this is his debut. Another guy that I'm really, really fascinated to see. This is the, kind of the first time he's played since he had his big resurgence. Lucas Glover. Yeah, I am keen to see Lucas Glover play well. You want to talk about a, just an exceptional iron player? Yeah, uh, and someone that you know should be comfortable around these parts. He's gotten plenty of starts here. You know, Sepp Straka. You've got uh, all right, Steven Yeager. We're just we're like, just yeah, saying names I don't know. now. Chris we're Kirk just saying names now. I'm we're liking just... the Georgia guys, man. So, okay, you know the the Georgia or kind of SEC guys. You know, guys that grew up in the Southeast. So. Okay. All right, that's going to bring us to wrap. Uh, that is the end of our Masters preview podcast. We will have a live show 4 p.m. Eastern uh, on Wednesday. Kind of, you know, we call it our happy hour. Brought to you by our friends at High Noon. We're gonna chat about some of the developing storylines, make final picks, all that kind of fun stuff. This is just something to get the week started. Uh, we'll have a, uh, a a FanDuel video preview out. That'll come out on Tuesday as well. Um, and we'll have live shows after the end of every round of play, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, where you can find live on our YouTube channel, uh, live on Twitter, uh, or now known as the X app. And, uh, and yeah, we have a lot of content to come this week. We'll have some writing coming down. We just... We're very, very excited. We'll, uh, we'll be Kevin and I will be here all week uh, covering it. I'll be kind of taking it in for my first time as a, as a press member, um, and I'm very, very excited about it. So we're going to look a little different this year than it has in years past, but uh, we're very excited about it. We thank you for uh, spending the best week in golf with us and for supporting our content. TC, Kevin, we will see you guys here on Wednesday, 4 p.m. Eastern. Thanks so much for tuning in. Cheers. Cheers. Crack on.